JT Shaver here with New Layer, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your Rode Pod mic or any other microphone sound more clean, crisp, and professional using three free effects that you already have. If you're a new streamer, podcaster, or content creator, this might be the most important video you watch to enhance the quality of your audio. I've got very minimal sound treatment in this room, so you will hear some reverb, but I wanted to show you that you can get high quality audio with as little equipment as possible. The better your initial recording sounds, the better the final product will be, so first I want to share three tips to help you get the most out of any microphone. I will have timestamp links if you want to skip this part and get straight to the post-processing. Number one is the microphone distance, and the closer you are to the microphone, the less you have to turn up the preamps and the less noise you have in your recordings. You'll also typically get better bass response to give you that boomier broadcast quality that people are after. With that said, if your mouth is too close to the mic, you'll get more sibilants and plosives, which are the S's, P's, and B's. On a dynamic mic like the Rode Pod mic, I like to have my mouth about four finger widths away from the mic. Number two is microphone positioning, so instead of speaking directly into the mic, you should have it about a 45 degree angle and off to the side. You want the microphone pointing at the sound source rather than aiming your voice, which is the sound source, at the microphone. Lastly, you want to set your recording levels properly, so you want the loudest parts or the peaks to be between negative 12 and negative 6 decibels. I usually aim for negative 9 decibels as a happy medium. If you follow those three tips, you'll get the best recording possible regardless of the equipment that you're using. So how do we go from a slightly thin and noisy recording to something clean and crisp like you might hear on a podcast? Step one is to accentuate the pleasing frequencies and cut back on the annoying ones using an equalizer. I'll be working in DaVinci Resolve just because that's what I use to edit videos, but this will also work in Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, Audition, and any other of the million editors out there. I have my audio loaded into Resolve on two separate tracks just so we can swap back and forth between them to hear the before and after more easily. So we're here in the Fairlight tab for audio editing and I'm going to select my track for the final processed audio and head over and double click on the equalizer. If you're not familiar, an equalizer allows you to boost or cut the low, mid, and high frequencies in your audio. So I'm going to use this to add some depth and airiness while also removing some of the annoying reverberant sounds. So I'm going to come over and turn on band 1 and that is the low cut filter so it's going to cut out all audio below a certain frequency. Human voices, especially women's voices, typically don't have any useful information this low down in the frequency range. So I'll play back the audio sample and sweep this back and forth and you'll be able to hear when it cuts out at certain frequencies. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode Pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer and noise gate. So when I go up too high, it cuts out the audio that I do want included, but for my voice, typically somewhere around 80 hertz is where I want it because my voice just isn't that low, so there's nothing below that that I need in my audio. If you have a really high or low voice, you'll need to adjust this up or down, but you're not using it to cut out any of your actual voice, just to eliminate any unwanted rumble. I'll use band 2 to boost some of the low end, so I'll click and drag that up pretty high so it's easy to hear as we work, and then move it back and forth until I find that nice deep range that gives my voice a fuller sound. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode Pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer, noise gate, and compression. So if I move this too high in the frequency range, it kind of has a muddy sound, so I'm going to lower it to about 375, and then I'm going to bring the gain down to about plus 4 or 5 decibels. So I'll play this back and turn band 2 on and off so you can hear the difference. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode Pod mic with the version. Next I'll use band 3 and 4 to eliminate any annoying or tinny sounds in the audio. So for band 3, I'm going to drag that all the way up, somewhere in the mid frequencies. And then I'll come down to the Q factor and turn that all the way up, and that'll make it so it just affects a smaller range of frequencies. So I'm going to play back the audio and sweep that back and forth until I find particularly annoying frequencies, and then we're just going to cut those back. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode Pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer, noise gate, and compression. So somewhere around the 2000 to 2500 hertz range is pretty annoying, so I'm going to leave it there, and then I'm going to change the gain down to about negative 4. I'm going to do the same thing with band 4 as I did with band 3, except at a little higher frequency. So I'll take the Q factor way up, and then drag that up, and then play back the audio and sweep it back and forth until I find some annoying frequencies. 
This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer, noise gate, and compression. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw rec So on this one I hear some annoying ringing sounds around 3500 hertz. So I'm going to leave it there and bring the gain down again to about negative 4. I'll play back the audio again and turn band 3 and 4 on and off so you can hear the difference. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer, noise gate, and compression. This will be a pretty subtle change and will sound different depending on what you're using to listen to your audio, whether that's headphones or studio monitors, but you'll end up with a much smoother sounding vocal in the end. I'm going to use band 5 to boost the high frequencies and add some airiness to my voice which will help with clarity or being able to understand what someone is saying on any type of sound system. So like the other bands, I'm going to drag band 5 up and play back the audio and sweep that back and forth until I find what I like. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer, noise gate, and compression. So somewhere around 5000 hertz sounds good to me, so I'm going to leave it there and take the gain to about 4 or 5 decibels. And I'll play that back and turn band 5 on and off so you can hear the difference again. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode pod mic. And I'm going to bring that down just a little bit, maybe to 3.5. Lastly, I'm going to turn on band 6, which is the high cut filter, and that's going to cut off all the audio above a certain frequency. Usually I'll set this to about 15,000 hertz because, again, there's not much useful information in your voice above that frequency. So now I'll play back the audio one more time and toggle the entire equalizer off to hear the difference. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer, noise gate, and compression. So it's not a super in-your-face change, but there is an obvious difference in fullness and clarity, which is what we want as a starting point. It's also important to remember that every voice and microphone combination will sound different, so definitely don't just copy the values that I have. Make sure you go through this process from the beginning anytime you're using a different setup. Once you get your setup dialed in and you use the same things every time, you can save everything I show you in this video as a preset so you don't have to do it all from scratch every time. So I'm going to close my equalizer and then step two is turning on an automatic noise gate. So in Resolve, I'll come over and double click on Dynamics, and they have a built-in noise gate right here. A noise gate lets sound through only if it's above a certain loudness, and is typically used to mute a track when no one is talking. So it does a great job hiding things like noise or fans running in the background and other things like that. If you have an extra noisy recording, doing some real noise reduction processing might be necessary, but a simple noise gate is much faster and usually drastically decreases perceived noise. It helps because during pauses in talking, it'll be completely silent, and when people are talking, the noise that is there will just blend in and you won't hear it as much. After you turn on your noise gate, the main thing you'll want to look at is the threshold. This is the volume at which the gate cuts off the audio, so what you want to do is to set that to a value just above the noise floor in your recording. I'll play back the audio and turn the threshold up and down, and you'll hear that if I turn it up too high, it cuts out audio that I don't want it to. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer, noise gate, and compression. So what I like to do is choose some areas of silence in the recording and play them back, then looking at the decibel meter, you can see the noise floor when there's no talking. So you can see here in my little decibel meter, it's barely hitting that negative 60 decibel mark. So for this recording, I'm going to have the threshold set all the way down to negative 50 decibels. Now, anytime my audio drops below negative 50 decibels, the noise gate kicks in. If you have a higher noise floor, you'll want to set the threshold just above whatever that level might be. There are some other advanced options here, but usually the only other one to adjust would be the range if your noise gate has it. This is the amount of volume reduction the noise gate applies when it takes effect. So the default in Resolve is 18, meaning it reduces the volume by 18 decibels whenever the noise gate is active. This is normally pretty good, but again, if you have a noisier recording, you can turn this up. The third and final step is to use a compressor, which takes just the loudest parts of your audio and brings the volume down closer to that of the quieter parts. After that, you bring the volume of the entire track up to make up for that volume loss, and the end result is that the processed audio has a smaller range between the loudest and quietest parts. 
This is especially useful for clarity when you have background music or other sound effects going at the same time as your vocal track. Like with the noise gate, the threshold is where you set the volume at which the compressor starts taking effect. Assuming your raw audio is peaking around negative 9 decibels, I usually set this around negative 20 decibels, so the compressor only affects audio that's louder than negative 20 decibels. So I'm going to turn this compressor on and play back the audio, and I'm going to slide the threshold back and forth and you can hear the difference. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer, noise gate, and compression. So you can hear if I decrease the threshold down too far, it starts to sound really smushed or compressed. And this is all really personal preference, and some people actually like that super compressed sound. If you just have dialogue going, a lighter amount of compression is typically better because it sounds more natural, but when you add music or other sound effects, stronger compression can actually help your vocals cut through the other audio without it just sounding like you turn the volume up on the vocal track. Again, there are some advanced settings here, but most editors are set up well with defaults meant for dialogue, so oftentimes you only need to adjust the threshold to get good results. The ratio setting is essentially the strength of the compression on the affected audio. So for dialogue, a 2 to 1 ratio will sound pretty natural, and I wouldn't really go higher than 3 to 1 for the most part. So I'll move my threshold back up to about negative 20, and then I'll play back the audio and adjust the ratio. And this is usually a pretty subtle change to hear, but you should be able to hear a difference. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer, noise gate, and compression. Like I mentioned earlier, you typically need to make up for an overall drop in volume after compression, so you'll see either a makeup or a gain setting. Just increase this until you're happy with the overall levels of your audio track. When it comes to vocals, usually less is more when it comes to a compressor, but it does a lot to help your audio sound more clear and crisp. I'll play the raw audio sample one more time, followed by the fully processed version with the equalizer, noise gate, and compression, so you can hear all the changes put together. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer, noise gate, and compression. This is sample audio to help us compare the difference between the raw recording from the Rode pod mic with the version processed using an equalizer, noise gate, and compression. Each step is a relatively subtle change, but when you put them all together, they make a significant difference while still sounding natural. My first professional quality mic was a Rode NT1000, which I bought used in 2005 for $310. With that said, the fact that the Rode pod mic is only $99 and gives you the build and sound quality that it does is pretty amazing. I'll have links in the description if you want to check it out yourself. Before you go, leave a comment and let me know if this video helped you improve the quality of your audio or if you have any other questions. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.